welcome to the Nerd Party. Hello and welcome to a special Between Takes episode of Missing Frames. I am your host, Sean Eastridge. Normally on Missing Frames, we watch all the movies we should have seen by this point in our lives, but the Between Takes episodes allow us to kind of go outside of the concept. We do filmmaker interviews, festival coverage, and franchise watches with the Franchise Boys, and that is exactly what we are here to do today. And we are continuing our 70th anniversary Godzilla celebration. And I am so thrilled to welcome my franchise boys. We've got Brad Gullickson over here. Welcome, Brad. Hi, I gotta say, it's really weird that we're recording already because normally, like before you hit record and start doing the episode, we have a little bit more time to banter and loosen up. <laughs> and I feel like I haven't loosened up at all, but we're doing it. Let's you go. have to do it. You have to dive in. Uh, and, and in the other corner, <laughs> we have Aaron Prescott. Welcome, Aaron. Hi, Sean. See, he needed to loosen up too. Listen now, to him. He sounds Aaron's like a dunce. Loose. This is loose and colorful. I, I, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm a little, I feel a little defeated. I honestly do. Like why, just, why why is that I, I just you know in this in this time off since the last time we've recorded it i've been doing some watching i've been doing some reading i've been also doing some listening and specifically i've been doing some listening of some missing frames podcasts and oh. it, in in that time i i have been called uh some sort of like elitist uh cinephile I, scum that uh, doesn't from my uh, own uh, uh, air quote friend Sean, I don't, that doesn't sound um, like anything. Oh no, 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 no. The show. Do we need to talk about Alien Three here on the Godzilla podcast? I oh boy, I, this, hold this on. Is, yeah. Was there Alien yeah. Three slander? I there was Alien don't... Three slander. Let me crack uh, this so, open. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything. Put the soundboard away. I I don't know anything about any of this. Uh, it sounds like like hogwash to me, mm, Mister. Well, and uh, I would not encourage anyone to go listen to the aliens <laughs> episode that I did with my friend TC, in which I may or may not have made such slanderous comments that sound. Uh, again outlandish never in my life or you know you could go listen to the franchise boys episode in which we cover did the we entire... do that franchise we did we did <laughs> believe it or... and you know it's funny uh alien alien romulus is uh is out technically today tomorrow I saw it last what? night you saw it last night what uh, give us give us a, a sound effect that demonstrates how you feel it's I, I like I don't have a sound effect. I thought you were just going to go because no, eh. like, I was like building up my letterbox to review for you. <laughs> and then you're like a sound effect. And I, I you know, that works. Hold on. Three words. No. Three words. Three no, words. No, here's the sound effect. Uh, Alien Covenant's better. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, I okay. Like, so, I like Alien Covenant. I mean, so you, I. you will hear this episode during the opening weekend of Alien Romulus. You can decide whether or not that is, uh, that is actually the case, like, but we, how much do you love the force awakens a bunch? <laughs> <laughs> Look, we, yes, despite what Brad thinks, we have done the Alien franchise, so maybe we'll come back around and do Alien Romulus just to round things out. But for now, we are still in the midst of celebrating Godzilla, and it will never end. This is the only franchise we've done in the year of our Lord and Savior, Godzilla 2024. Um, I just want to point that out. Since the start of this year, we, <laughs> the franchise boys, have just been doing Godzilla, which I, I'm not surprised by. I mean, I knew this was probably what was going to happen, but I think it's been worth it so far. And uh, the Showa era, as we've discussed already, is is a delight. It's fun, even when the movies are not uh, up to par with what you would want them to be. It's uh, it's still a lot of fun. And um we're we're moving on. We're I don't have Heisei access era. to your numbers, your downloads, your subscribers, but I am very curious to know. You don't have to give me specifics, but like, is are the the listens going up or are they going down? That's <laughs> Fran- look, franchise boys are consistently uh, 
ignored in my numbers. That's actually not true. These episodes do really well. Uh, these are typically uh, in in the year end stats. These are usually in top three, top four. One of these is going to be here, and it could very well be this Heisei era episode. Okay, all right. I bet Brad it was about to on the franchise. Brad, look, Brad with Comic Book Couples Counseling Podcast. Brad and Lisa are taken off the stratosphere. He does like not. Number one he or does nothing. not have if, time. If you ain't first, you're He's, last. That's he right. does not have the time to watch seven Godzilla movies. Half I of watched which all may of these. How mediocre. dare you? Don't you come at me already? I was telling a friend of mine, explaining to her like what this was and what we were doing, and uh, I told her, uh, you know, when I watched Godzilla versus. The Destroyer, destroy, uh, destroyer, 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 destroyer. Uh, I told her I watched that, and she's like, "Oh, so you're finally done?" And I'm like, "Oh, with this era." <laughs> uh, but let me tell you what: <laughs> there are maybe 20 more films to watch, if not more than that. So, no, no, I'm not. We are not anywhere near to done. But we are going to get there by the end of 2024. That is my solemn vow. To, Ooh, to I don't believe the that list, at all. To the, <laughs> To the listeners who I swear love the franchise boys episodes so much. You know much. it's the 40th anniversary of Ninja Turtles. We could be talking about Turtles in Time right now. We could be, and I yeah. am going through like a Ninja Turtles uh, thing, like obsession right now. It would be perfect. But you know what, Brad? We're not going to let you sideswipe this <laughs> and take us off track. We're ta- we already did Alien. We're going to do Ninja Turtles someday, but we are here to hey, say it up. So let's hey, say it up. Let's start with The Return of Godzilla, 1984, but then also confusingly in America, known as Godzilla 1985, because it was released the following year. But this is a whole decade Godzilla has been slumbering. The franchise went to bed with, what was it? Was it Terror of Mecha Godzilla? Correct. That's (laughs) it. Okay. So that kind of put the franchise to rest for a bit. Uh, and it was a significant bit of time for a popular franchise. I know that one I don't think was very popular. I think it was. No, it did terrible. I think yeah, there's a was, nine year difference between the two movies. I think you're right. Uh, it, it was a long time. And it, uh, it they decided, you know what? We're going to kind of go back. We're going to do a back to basics approach. We're going to have Godzilla once again, not be the kind of cartoony superhero kid friendly version that everyone had gotten used to and tired of. We're going back to the like the gritty, the angry villain, villainous Godzilla. Uh, and we're, we're ringing in a whole new era of, uh, of Godzilla, starting with that. Even though technically the Heisei era of Japan didn't start until Biolante, this is considered yeah. the first of the Heisei era because it is, it's the, it's the reboot. It is kind of kicking things off. So uh, Aaron, we'll start with you. Do you uh, have any fond memories of watching this movie or uh, how do you feel in general about the return of Godzilla slash 1985? I I guess I'll I'll throw it back to to you as well. Like which, and and maybe to both you guys, which one did you watch? Did you go with return or Godzilla 85? Uh, And it does one, uh, work better for you? Uh, have you not seen another one? Like, where do you guys lie with the Americanized version versus the Japanese version? I mean, the American ahead. version is the one I saw originally, and my nostalgia mm-hmm. is attached to that one. Right. Yeah, I saw that one first, and I, I've I, I barely remember what the American version was, but I do remember seeing it and being terrified of the opening scene where the the guy goes onto the ship and there's like floating jellyfish monsters and dead crew members i remember mm-hmm. being like this is too much for me i'm nine i can't yeah. watch this yeah um but i in all my godzilla watches since i've stuck primarily to the uh, the japanese version yeah just because I, mean- I think and and there's a whole uh there is a whole story and and tale that is involving English dubs of Godzilla and just how they kind of for years and years were just a running gag to the point where people were like, oh, Godzilla movies are actual jokes. Like they aren't real movies. So, yeah. Well, and, and we're that's... criterion, uh, you know, owners. So of course we go with the original <laughs> subtitled true. version. That is, true. that is true. And uh, do we need to, do we need to uh, put the word out to criterion to not uh, not let us down and put out a high say like a uh, master 
complete uh, oh absolutely they collection need to. of this like they did they've already put Michoa. it on the criteria they've put it on the criterion channel it's not all of them but it does Correct. have uh Correct, but i need and... i need i need the physical i want that big giant book like the showa era it's one, happening it's gonna happen it, it, it better and we're gonna this, manifest yeah. that right I, 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 think this, I think this podcast could it be better edge. include the roland emmerich film <laughs> that, but that's not Heisei. That's not Heisei. You get out of here. I, no, but the whole box set. I imagine that the next <laughs> box set will have Heisei through uh, Godzilla minus one, and and I want I want Godzilla uh, Matthew Broderick in there. I okay. want I I want the four disc like we're getting the four disc four K of of minus one. I want uh, mm-hmm. I want the Japanese to release a four disc version of Godzilla Roland Emmerich with only interviews from uh, Japanese uh, filmmakers and Godzilla creator, original scholars, Godzilla scholars. Yes. Yeah, scholars. <laughs> I want, I want the feedback from Japan on Roland Emmerich Godzilla. We're going to get to Roland Emmerich Godzilla, not in this episode. We're going to get there eventually. Is that We're, its own era? That's, yeah. I mean, <laughs> One it, and it done. kind of is, it kind of is. I think it'll probably be an American We'll probably just put it with legendary. Godzilla era, but it it is in a category of its own. But right. uh, Aaron, so Return of Godzilla, did you see it uh, when you were younger? Did you have to wait until you were older to get access to it? Uh, I, I honestly can't remember where 85 came into the loop because, yeah, I, I did watch like uh, Biolanti and and uh, King Ghidra. Those were like the two like ones that I watched uh, so many times growing up. And so I, I know I've seen uh, uh, Return of at some point, but I don't really recall where it all just kind of like, you know, melded into one big, Oh, I'm watching Godzilla. And that's all I really needed. Um, but it, it was interesting because on this, on this round of rewatches, I actually watched both. I watched 85 and return. Oh, and, wow. Okay. Yeah. And, and well, what I found interesting was I kind of have, I can't remember what, what we really talked about when we did the show era, because it was like, I felt like that was eight years ago that we talked about, it. <laughs> but um you know, there's, there's the, the I, I have this disdain for the King of the Monsters because it f- was such like a watered the fil- down the film, thing. the American remake of the original. Yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. and not so Godzilla had, himself, not the King no, of the Monsters. No, 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 himself. no, no, no. The King is King, but no, the the King of the Monsters, the Americanized version that had Raymond Burr in it. Um, right. That one always, you know, it 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 just it felt wrong. You know, it felt like trying to take a step back and like saying, Oh, it wasn't, you know, not, not our fault, you know, that we didn't have anything to do with that. And so there was always something that kind of, uh, that irked me about it. And Godzilla 1985 had the same feeling and that, that connective tissue was Raymond Burr. And so I was like, that's I just right. Remember, I like, forgot he comes back for the yeah. 1985, the American version of this movie. Yeah. And, and when, when you watch it, like, you know, it's pretty much the, the same story cut all the way through, but they have these intercut scenes, not just with Rainbow, they have other like American, uh, a couple of American characters. Cause you know, the, the whole story is kind of like this political, uh, Japan caught in the middle between the two superpowers between, you know, Russia and, and, and United States and being these two superpowers that are just like, let's just nuke it. And they're like, and you know, Japan knowing that they're caught in the middle of this and they're the only ones that truly understand what that means and, yes. and the ramifications of that. And, which and it's also this, that that is baked into Godzilla. The that character. is it is the essence of why this is even a thing of why it's even a discussion. And so um, so there's there's that story aspect of it. But the thing about the insert uh, shots from uh, I think is R.J. Kaiser, the director of uh, the, the American parts of of uh, of 85. Uh, he's the director of Hell Comes to Frogtown. Uh, yeah. the great Roddy Roddy Piper uh, classic. And so it, it has these like completely like just immature, just like comedic elements that, you know, and like we said, this return of Godzilla, it's taking a much darker tone. It's taking a more aggressive, more seedy, more realistic tone as with, you know, to kind of stick with that original movie and the American parts just completely take it out of it. The mm. one thing that really pulled me in that I was shocked about this time was Raymond Burr. The one thing that I (laughs) did not like about the first one, because he just, he personified the Americanization of the original King of the Monsters. But in this movie, there is one person that is giving it his all that is almost acting like it's Shakespearean that is taking it completely serious. And that's Raymond Burr. You should like the, the like final scene. He has like this, uh, kind of monologue that goes over, you know, uh, some of the other footage. 
and it's really kind of kind of great. And uh, nice. I just wanted to say that about it is that Raymond Burr, who once uh, you know took me out of the original uh, Americanization, completely kept me in on this one. It's still not a great movie because of how silly the Americanized version is, but Raymond Burr is uh, elite level uh, of Shakespearean style acting that we need in these Godzilla films. Yeah. I feel like that's an element that might at least make it worth watching more so than maybe King of the Monsters is. Yeah. But, but Brett, how do you feel about return of uh, return of Godzilla? Well, if I can hey say anything, I would say <laughs> that <laughs> the movie going back to a darker tone, trying to follow in the footsteps of the original Godzilla is admirable. And I can, I understand why, we needed a reboot in that way here at the same time in hindsight i like it's not necessarily what i want godzilla to be in 1984 um so i i like godzilla 85 as a kid but watching return of godzilla today it just felt like a wannabe original godzilla that's mm-hmm. exactly how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. It's it's mi- middling is the word I just yeah. describe it. And it's it what makes it more disappointing is that it is okay, 10 years after this had better be you know, you expect and we are trained now that like well, <laughs> we're kind of trained to feel the opposite, but there was a period of time where if you were going to reboot something it had better be great. Like Batman Begins is great. Casino Royale is great. Star Trek 09 is great. So there is this feeling of, you know, in 84, you're like, oh, the return of Godzilla. They waited 10 years. That's 10 years to come up with like, who knows how many great ideas. It's going to feel fresh and exciting and it's going to look great because it's in the 80s versus the, the 60s, 70s. And then it's just sort of like, oh, you know, I love the design of Godzilla. I like Godzilla being... um you know, the angry villain again. But other than that, it, it there's not much about it that stands out. It's not like the, mm-hmm. the rousing return of this character. It's more like, oh, okay, well, it's another Godzilla movie with, with nothing really, nothing about it that stands out. You know, the human it's, characters it's, are bland yeah. and it's just, it it's disappointing in that regard. I, I think other than like seeing Godzilla up to like, you know, some big, you know, giant uh, miniatures, some bi- some bigatures. Uh, <laughs> there's not much, you know, interesting things going on in like the final battle and all that stuff. Yeah. And, you know, it kind of reminded me a bit of, and I, I, I don't want to disparage it, it reminded me of Shin Godzilla in the way that like, it's the political kind of like a uh, lot of talking and, and discussion of the right thing to do and the kind of, uh, bureaucratic side. To well, I think with what a- makes this movie interesting is if you put it in the context of Three Mile Island having oh, yeah, just happened, yeah. right? Yeah. So absolutely. it is very much like Shin Godzilla. Yeah. You know, the the the, the threat of uh, nuclear power is at the forefront of the audience's imagination again, and right. that's what's interesting about the Return of Godzilla. Unfortunately. It's it not weird enough. It just, yeah, it's well, it's, and not interesting enough, right? Like, yeah. It's just yeah, not it, interesting it, enough. And yeah. that's also like, it's a portion of the film. For the most part, we're following yeah. this reporter, this this guy who was in the ship that got shipwrecked, and his sister. And for a little while, it's interesting. There's kind of like, oh, there's a cover up. The government doesn't want to anyone to know that Godzilla's back. That stuff leading up to Godzilla, I'm like, okay, okay, this is interesting. But weirdly enough, and this is honestly a symptom, I think, of the series in general. The better Godzilla movies overcome this by being exciting and interesting. But I think a lot of the Godzilla movies that are less successful are the ones that sort of like, by the time Godzilla shows up and by the time you get to the third act, the human are just kind of all right we're just gonna watch (laughs) we're just here to say things like oh godzilla really throws a punch and like wow this is wow he looks like he's getting hurt and like things like that and return of godzilla is no exception but also we're we're like suffering through like having to spend a lot of time with these uh (laughs) these characters as they like try to escape a building that's 
falling apart. They're just mm-hmm. in this building for what feels like days and days. Yeah. And the middle section where they have like this round table with all the different governments around the world discussing like we have to use. I love, by the way, Heisei continues the tradition of just like talk about the worst American, the American actors actor you can Every, like, find. It's like they're going out of their way to humiliate us and be like, no, these guys don't have a single good actor in here like it is it is baffling <laughs> it's so good like we the nuclear weapons and you know that's the like you guys are saying it's the only thing about this movie that's like oh well that is interesting bringing yeah. that back you know and it's again it's baked into godzilla's dna but it is kind of like japan is the one that decides like no we're not we're not doing that we, and yeah. you guys don't get to decide whether or not we're doing that. And there's an interesting commentary there that, of course, is just kind of like by the by the end of the movie, you're like, oh, that's right. Yeah, it would have been more interesting if we'd kind of kept that through the, the final act. But it is like you said, Brett, it, it, it kind of is like I, I want this to be like big and epic and like, all right, we're back into it. But it feels like. This is going to sound mean. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Brace yourself. Always. This is going to sound mean. I mean this with all due respect because I actually really, really love this actor and I really enjoy the the film I'm about to, to state. But let me explain myself. It's a little like The Living Daylights with Timothy Dalton in that oh. we needed James Bond to be Goldeneye. We needed that level of like departure from like, oh, we're taking it into the modern era. And The Living Daylights, the way it's directed and the way it feels, it's kind of like some of it is updated. Timothy James Dalton is great, but it does feel still like, all right, we're still kind of in the trend of the, the Bond formula in a way that doesn't feel super detached from like what we've seen. Before. Never and- hey say never again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, there you go. So that, I'm, that's I'm keep- Brad. Just let you know, I'm keeping a tally of how many hey say uh, puns you have throughout this thing. You should prepare yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's how I feel. I, and Living Daylights is a much better. I think Living Daylights is a very good movie, which right. I would not say about Return of Godzilla. I think it's okay and it's one honestly like in the grand scheme of godzilla films when somebody's like look i want to watch godzilla movies i really don't want to watch all of them just give me the best of like Mm -hmm. this would not go on my even like just for fun list like i would be like you could probably skip (laughs) i like this might be hyperbolic but like (laughs) this is my least favorite godzilla movie so far that we have discussed wow I, you know, that I, but is I not even s- remotely true. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know if it's my least favorite, it's my but feelings. it's definitely like one of the blandest. Like it doesn't have it really yeah, doesn't exactly. have a whole it's like, lot what's going the point for here. It. Come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so but it does have a great end credits song, uh, which I think I, I don't know the name of, but it's just them singing goodbye, Godzilla. Like mm-hmm. and it's like it's not goodbye. He just came back. Like this is the reboot. We're like we're just this is the start of a whole new era. We're not saying goodbye. We're saying hello to him. But um that's that I think is the highlight of the film for me. Um other random thoughts. Uh, it is weird that the the special effects feel <laughs> like not super like and it, we're we're in the 80s now and we have like raiders and star wars and things like that and to have a return of godzilla that's still like oh yes and it's always going to be a guy in a suit but for some reason in return of godzilla it just feels particularly cheap it just feels like oh this doesn't look that much more advanced than the effects we were seeing but well i don't think they ago. were interested in advancing the effects at this point i think i think they're trying to get toned down yeah because i mean because why even bring out a godzilla when you're not going to have like a a, a foe for him to go up against because you're really just doing the only one that's really ever done this is the original one where it's just him coming into a city and just saying uh i'm gonna walk through this place and you know uh us getting mad at him um yeah but I, i i think the one thing i will defend it is that i really did enjoy the kind of political propaganda that it placed in between the two great superpowers. I really liked that aspect of it. And um, I I think, I think being able to focus on that uh, really kind of set it over the edge of like, of like, Oh, this is saying something interesting. And now with a Godzilla film, you want to see something interesting. So that was the only thing that, yeah, I agree that completely took me out of it, but I did enjoy uh, that aspect of it. So how, uh, how many, I guess, amazing, 
goodbye goodbye now godzilla songs <laughs> do we give this on a scale from one to five with five being the highest one being the lowest brad i still can't bring myself to be like one uh yeah. so i'll go two aaron how about you i'm going right down the middle of the road it's a three-star film okay i i, I think i would say two as well um, so moving on to Godzilla versus Biollante. Now, what's crazy about this is this is half a decade, I think, after it was 89, right? Yeah, it's 89. So, yeah. so it's like six yeah, so, years. Yeah, which is crazy. That's not math. Yeah. I, well, it's close <laughs> enough. It, it's it's about as good of math as you're going to get on this show. Um, I uh, that that was crazy to me that, that it took them five years to then make another one after their grand return. They, it seemed like nobody was really ready for Godzilla to return. But it was like Return of Godzilla was successful. People wanted more Godzilla. So I don't know. But uh, be And I feel like also Godzilla hunger was really starting to build up at this point. You know, yeah. I think in the 80s, people were discovering uh, the older Godzilla movies and, uh, you know, a craving was developing. The video market Godzilla was films. coming out. So it's, yeah. it makes sense mm-hmm. that people, especially, you know, in America, a lot of these films are becoming available for the first time as English dubs. But like still like for for us as kids, that's like, who cares? This is great. It's Godzilla. But Biolante was uh, five years after Return of Godzilla and one of the Godzilla movies that falls into the category with like Hetera, where it's like there is no other Godzilla movie like this. It's very weird. It's it's somewhat unsettling and uh, kind of in a league of its own. Uh, but before I, I go too much into revealing my opinion, uh, Brad, we'll start with you this time. How do you feel about Godzilla versus Biollante? Uh, when did you first see it? I have no idea when I first saw it a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Uh, (laughs) But I think you can guess what I think about this film. You mentioned one of my favorite Godzilla movies already. This movie is incredibly weird. It also goes like, you know what? Nuclear energy, that's passe. That's boring. How about (laughs) biochemistry? (laughs) Uh, Like plants. Gross. Uh, And yeah, I'm down for it. I love Biolante. Aaron, how do you feel? Uh, this is great. Inject the soul of a dead girl into every bad guy is what I say. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, like just, it, it's so much fun and it's weird and you have no real clue what's going on. But the thing that's, that's great is you get this, you get the social commentary, you get the, uh, the, uh, environmental commentary and, uh, you get this crazy looking, just beautiful monster that, I mean, the, the guys of, of Godzilla, especially in the high era, like are just the uh, if there was a a, a a a an Oscar just for putting fog into uh, a, a <laughs> shot, they would be getting an Oscar every year because like it just it it just like sits there and makes everything so moody and they backlight this creature as if like the sun is just following so it the cool entire looking. time. It's so cool and yeah. Uh, yeah, just put it on the side of a of a windowless van. Uh, that's all I want to say. <laughs> and it ranks number one on Greta Thunberg's Godzilla list. Gre- oh, really? Here we yeah. go. This is her yeah, number I one. I don't know what her top five is. I didn't even know she had one. <laughs> yeah, no, she loves Godzilla Rides Again. That's there amazing. And so, and somehow that doesn't... Did you say Godzilla Rides Again? Ra- yeah. Rage, God's, Rage, 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 <laughs> Rage Again. I think oh, we made... I'm starting Greta. to feel like I, I have some level of deja vu that makes me think we made a joke about that's what it should have been called in the Showa era episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, uh, it just see it feels like that's where that was going because I do want Godzilla rides again versus Godzilla. Yeah, rides it's again. him in earnest, and they're taking it <laughs> right down the court <laughs> to the hoops. I, uh, I Biolante is one of the best uh, creature designs in this entire franchise. Yeah, totally. And again, you never see really like maybe Destroya, but you don't see anything like Biolante as a creature or a concept in this franchise. It's like okay, we have the scientist who's haunted by the death of his daughter who was killed by Godzilla and he imbues the this plant, this experiment that he's working on with his dead daughter's selves. So it becomes like filled with the, the soul, the spirits of his dead daughter, which is like an idea they don't really 
they don't develop it quite to fruition outside of just as a talking point. Like they pay it lip service. They're like, ah, yes, my daughter's cells. And then at the end, it's like, oh, <laughs> you see her floating head. Like, yes, oh, wait, her I floating, <laughs> her Zordon head floating into outer space. And it, I mean, it would have been really interesting. I think if, if we'd homed in a little bit more on this scientist's maybe obsession with Bialante and like obsession with this is my daughter reborn and she is our defender. Um, that's like me nitpicking. I think Bialante is, is great. I'm with you guys. I think this is, such it, it 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 gets by solely um just alone on being so bizarre but there's also a lot of ridiculous stuff <laughs> i think hetera might be a little bit more focused weirdly enough this one has like a, a james bond-esque subplot because the filmmaker i think the director was not into godzilla and was really into james bond movies so he's like i'll do it but i want a whole subplot where there's like shootouts and like spies and people like all these these like chases and things like that that he desperately wanted to put in the movie to uh to make it interesting but then at the same time he made this very cerebral like more thoughtful godzilla movie uh at least certainly more thoughtful than return of godzilla and more thoughtful than a lot of the uh the other ones we'd see do we know why there's such a tonal shift between this one and the last one because like Return of Godzilla is supposed to be like, we're going back to, you know, the serious themes of the original. And then now they're like, yeah, yeah, we're going to have some environmental stuff in this, but like plant monster, you know? <laughs> so apparently yeah. there was like, wasn't there like a contest, like a Japanese yeah. contest? It was, a, I think some dentist like one, he just wrote like a, like a, a simple script or something and maybe had some, uh, some art going into it. But you know, it, it was, wasn't there was another jet Jaguar. Wasn't he like an art contest? Uh, I believe yes, so, yes, yes. Yeah. like that. And so go to the fans. The fans know what we want. I mean, you know, just let us write the scripts for crying out loud. We know, we, we, you know, we, we, we got it where it counts. Um, so no, I don't, I don't really know why the big, you know, extreme tonal shift, but I am thankful for it. Yes, I'm okay with it too. And also I'm I'm reading Little Shop of Horrors because that was around mm. this time. So people yeah. were thinking like, oh yeah, let's get a giant plant. You know, the Godzilla franchise is nothing if not like just relentlessly ripping off <laughs> every other franchise around. Well, especially especially this Heisei era, which I think is fascinating. You kind of go from to each movie, especially from here on out, and you get a sense that, uh, you, you know, the, the director just, you know, kind of, was grabbing onto something and then like, you know, as well as just like putting Godzilla in here is like, ah, this is what's hot right now. So I'm going to put, you know, I'm going to sprinkle it with some of this, some of this Hollywood magic and see if I can yes. make something really grow. Exactly. And then it didn't do well, right? It didn't. I it was, uh, it, no. it, it did not do well at all. Uh, and ironically in later years, I think there was a Japanese poll that named Bialante the best Godzilla movie. Um, I don't remember which, pull it was or when it was conducted but like it is <laughs> ironic that that ended up being the case that's oh yeah extreme. okay here we go uh in july 2014 in a poll reported by the nihon aiga satellite broadcasting corporation godzilla versus bialante was selected as the best godzilla film by a group of uh, fans and judges in japan so uh it didn't do well. A lot of people think like it was too dark. It was too weird. There weren't any recognizable outside of Godzilla. Like they thought they'd strayed too far into trying something. New. It is funny. Like, it's like, that's exactly why I think Bialante works is it's like, it's new. You haven't seen a Godzilla movie like this. And they, and of course the response to it is like, nobody goes to see it. So their thought mm -hmm. is, well, we got to bring back all the villains that people know and love to get them their butts in the seats. Um, they also blamed Back to the Future Part 2. Like, they were like, yeah. people want to see the, the time travel movies. They don't want to see which is Which is exactly why it was in the next movie, because the director blamed Back to the Future on its, uh, on the, you know, it beating out uh, by Alonzi by so much. And so they're like, he's like, I yeah. got to put time travel in here. I got to put, yeah, put they're like, uh, we, the we can't have something this strange. Let's make something way more normal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it is like, I, I think, you know, 
the things that I wish this movie, I wish this movie was weirder as crazy as that sounds based on what we're saying about it. And anyone who's seen it knows the movie is pretty weird already, but I do wish it had kind of focused a little bit more on Bialante. I feel like there's a whole chunk of the movie where after Godzilla and Bialante fight, Bialante kind of disappears. And then it's just Godzilla kind of ravishing and doing his thing. And then Bialante comes back at the end um, to, to defeat Godzilla. Um, I wish it had been a little bit more focused on maybe like the relationship between Bialante and, and the scientist dad um, who sort of like the human characters in a lot of these movies is relegated to spectator. And he just starts commentating like, ah, Godzilla is fighting Bialante. Yes. This is the destruction we have. We've wrought and, you know, Japan, the, the pain we are suffering, it's brought it on our, it's a lot of that stuff. And I almost wish there was a little bit more of like, how does he feel about this thing? That is basically a representation of his daughter. Like he, he emotionally, he's not super affected by it feels like. And then he gets shot at the end of the movie. It's sort of, <laughs> that leads into another chase, James Bond esque chase scene where a car flips over and there's a, a, a wacky, fist fight in the mud um mm -hmm. so that's really like a, you could go weirder with bialante but bialante is also so strange and like hetera it really falls into that same category of like wholly unique and you really don't get a lot of those in this franchise so for that it, it it gets a lot of love from An another aspect i liked about it is the introduction of uh the miki Yes, uh, character, uh, because we kind of get this through line. She she doesn't really get to do much in uh, some of the other movies, uh, especially up until like uh, uh, probably Space Godzilla is probably like, you know, when she kind of gets to do uh, the most things and then Destroya, uh, she has a really big part. But it, it was nice to kind of have like this this common character who has this um, more than just a personal uh, connection with, with yeah and, and but it is yeah. it's also like it, i agree i'm glad you brought that up because she plays such a uh you know not a big role but she is like the recurring character yeah. slash actor and she's the millie bobby brown of uh the <laughs> yeah. <Don't>, hey <laughs> <laughs> not, not, yes come on yes i, I give don't her, I, give her a little respect I, <laughs> but i like I, it is like oh this random psychic character you know it, it is something we've seen weird outer space stuff and weird stuff in this franchise, but like psychic lady who is tuned in to this giant plant. That is a de the, the scientist's dead daughter. It's like, mm -hmm. Oh, this is very strange. And it's interesting and great that they bring her back. Even though, like you said, Aaron, she doesn't have much to do for the next couple movies. It's cool that she's there at all, but yeah. um, anything else, it, Brad, anything else you want to, you want to send off Bialante? Uh, I mean, I think the climax of the film is top tier Godzilla monster yes. kaiju battle stuff. Uh, as Aaron said, it's beautifully shot. It's just a crazy, gorgeous looking movie. Uh, it is bug nuts and I'm here for bug nuts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, then how many uh, how many how many bug nuts would you give uh, Godzilla? Versus I also Lanta? agree with you that it's maybe not as. Um, uh streamlined in its bug nutsness so i will go with three and a half aaron how about you uh holding hands called with brad three and a half three and a half for me as well right across the board so godzilla versus bialante also like again we're talking it's the opposite of return of godzilla in that we're making this short list of godzilla movies you have to see bialante is going on that list 100 percent yeah all right, so now we are moving into, uh, obviously, Bialante was not a success, as we've already discussed, which meant that aside from incorporating time travel as a mandate, because obviously Back to the Future was the reason Godzilla didn't do well, um, we also need to start incorporating classic villains that people recognize that will get butts in the seats. So not five years, but just a mere two years after Bialante, uh, we get Godzilla versus King Ghidorah. And uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it, Brad, we started with you. We'll just start with you again, Brad. Okay. How do you feel about this one? Uh, like, 
<laughs> I love King Ghidorah. So if King Ghidorah is involved, I'm really into it. The future, the Futurians, the Futurians, <laughs> however you say their name. Uh, I'm not so sure how I feel about those, <laughs> that element. You don't like the, the, the T-1000 uh, slash T-800 yeah, mashup? Yeah, I like, like... I like I like the big swing of this movie. <laughs> I don't know if it's a swing that I would have taken, but I appreciate it. But most importantly, it's about bringing King Ghidorah back and then going like full mecha King Ghidorah at yes, the end. Yeah. Like that's like, oh, this is what I'm here for. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I And I do like when aliens show up. I like I mean, I love a good UFO in a Godzilla movie. It's true, but it is interesting that like it, it only took th- <laughs> what I mean, you know, we have five years between Return of Godzilla and Biolante, but it only took three movies for them yeah. to go right back to like, okay, crazy sci fi, goofy. Yeah, uh, and this is absurd. where I want to be. Like, this is like, I know we differ uh, in, in this regard, but this is the neutral that I like my Godzilla films to be in. I'm okay with it too. I just think it's funny that in general, the Heisei era is kind of acclaimed as like, oh, it's the darker, like back to basics. Yeah. But there is a period in this this era where it is like, it's just Showa movies, but updated for the 80s. 100%. And 90s. Um, so, uh, Aaron, how do you feel about this one? I love <laughs> kitchen sink cinema. When you throw anything <laughs> yes. and everything. Yes into that, that one sink and it's it's big it's deep it holds everything and you're like i'm just gonna stir this thing around and see what so you know i'm gonna take a little ladle i'm gonna taste it does it taste like her? i don't care it's got everything and everything it's got dinosaurs it's got holograms and droids world war ii <laughs> revisionist history jet time packs, travel tank time lasers travel. time travel major spielberg uh major spielberg like, <laughs> this i i i i intently love this movie like there's so much about this that is so much fun and stupid and great and ripping off of other movies and it's it's uh it's it's a work of art i sent you i think back in november back when we were originally going to start this (laughs) the last november i sent you the clip of because i had forgotten about the major spielberg oh yeah line um i think i sent you guys the video like can't wait to do this in a couple weeks and now here we are eight months almost almost a full year later finally getting around to it um i i like king Ghidorah. like this is fine um i think what bothers me is what i was saying which is that Hey, say I I wanted to I want to feel like I'm seeing new stuff like Bialante or Destroya, and this feels a little bit too much like okay I but I've kind of seen this already. You've I never agree. seen Godzilla Saurus before. Yeah, yeah it's, well that is true. No. Yeah, the time travel going back to see the origins of Godzilla is absurd and fun. Um, I I hate, it. I hate uh, Godzilla Saurus. <laughs> I, love, I love what I do love about that scene though is when the general like Godzilla Godzilla Saurus is stomping around the general is in a cave and he just looks up and he goes a dinosaur and he leaves and it's like what do you mean why was that the first thing you thought of like there are bombs exploding wouldn't you just be like oh my god we're under attack but like without seeing it in the middle of world war ii he just looks up and he goes a dinosaur in in 1940s japan or like it it's great i love it that's that's basically to me what uh this film is but i mean it is a dinosaur why would you not be like uh, like completely flabbergasted i was a dinosaur kid growing up and so you know all right so but here's the thing this is not just a movie this is a prophecy okay if we're gonna go to that major (laughs) spielberg spiel you know so for for people who haven't seen it there's a great scene where i see what's uh, going to happen where the the japanese (laughs) the japanese are getting bombed on the island there's a dinosaur there and uh then then it goes it cuts to the uh the u.s uh cruiser or whatever and the 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 guy comes out and says something to to Major Spielberg, and he says, "Hey, I hope your son back home can with with another terrible uh, American actor." By yes, like, amazing, just, amazing. Just continuing the trend of just finding the worst possible people to deliver these lines. <laughs> um, but he says, you know, something about his son when he gets back home. It, he hopes he can tell these stories to his son or something like that. This is so. First off, you know, the director alone is just talking about the amazing uh, art and oeuvre of Steven Spielberg. 
up until 1991. We are now looking at an uh, a dinosaur island where they just bombed the crap out of a dinosaur. Um, I'm sorry, Brad, can you tell me what movie Steven Spielberg puts out two years later? Schindler's List. The other, <laughs> the other movie two years later. Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. I'm sorry. We're, 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 are we are we talking about time travel in this movie? Because Brad it was waiting like that whole it's, time. It's, to, I, I knew it was to I, reveal I, I, that punchline. I'm, 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 I'm waiting. I've teed it up it. for it, and I'm just letting him rip. But, Never uh, hey say a word. <laughs> and check. Okay. Or no, I meant uh, to say don't hey say a word. I, oh, I messed take that away. Take the points. That doesn't count. Okay. Um, no, that, that's uh, I, 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 I. There's so much. Do rats? Are you are you kidding me? Like they're they're cute. They're Pokemon. It's like uh, they they turn them into the, the King Gidra. I I love the over explanation of everything in this movie, and it's it's just wonderful. Yeah, the over explanation that just yes. ma- the, it makes less and less sense oh, the more yeah. it's explained. It's Completely. like you know what? Let's just all right. No more explanations. Let's get into it. Because like, also wait. you're like you're like going back and like wait. Why are we worried about him being a dinosaur when we're talking about him being irradiated, like in this, you know, era? And you're like, what, is, what are we, what are we talking about? He could have just been a dinosaur, but yeah, right, yeah, exactly. So they, I mean, and there are like laser gun battles in the like they Love really it. did throw everything mm-hmm. they could possibly think of into this movie, and I mean. I'm not going to say it works for me, but it certainly is like one of the most um, of the Godzilla movies. It's got the most. It's got the most of a lot of <laughs> a lot of these movies. Um, what else do I love? The the T-1000 ripoff that runs very quickly. And it's the M-11. Just the- yeah, mm-hmm. yes the m11 mm-hmm. that they just speed up the the frame rate or they i guess they slow it down is technically what they do but. well he's like running on wires looks like he's on like just the world's weirdest treadmill because he's yes like behind some bushes and like it reminds me a lot of kung fu hustle like the looney tunes kung fu hustle well, sequence yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. just but like with this it's like Speaking that's the best that it's one of the it's the best they can do and that makes it even better um so i do like that a lot um Again, I think the Godzilla design is great. Uh, one thing we forgot to mention about the uh, about Biolante is Akira Ikuf, uh, Ifukube came back to score it, and he scores this one as well. So I like that. I uh, I think I just am thrown by needing this, like just the quick retreat into like standard Godzilla fare for me is what holds this back. I'm like, ah, this is where the, the Heisei era starts to lose me a little bit is when we start to retread and it's like, none of these are as interesting as Violante. Is it interesting or is it just not a tone that you jive with? Like to me, this is just anti Sean cinema, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I do. I enjoy the, like I do typically enjoy this tone. I enjoyed it in show up, but I am like, let's roll back the tape I, on previous <laughs> franchise boys. episodes. I, but I think, yeah, I do want the Heisei era to be consistently like, look, if we're going to go grounded, angry Godzilla and like the terror of this creature, then this is like, what are we doing here? This is I've seen this already. I've seen the outer space stuff. I I don't know. So, yeah, on the one hand, I love that it's ridiculous. But on the other hand, I'm kind of like, I I need Godzilla to get with the times here. I need some some grounded weird violante stuff more than this is that okay brad no <laughs> well uh, what else is there anything else that needs to be said about this one this is the same director as Biolante. yeah godzilla uh sound effect is recycled gamera sound effects is that <laughs> That's right great yep <laughs> <laughs> i'm okay with that um get a little but, gamera yeah. in our godzilla uh-huh it isn't it is interesting that Violante King Ghidorah feels more like, I don't know. It feels more like a standard Godzilla movie, but I guess, you know, if we're talking about, he put in all this James Bond stuff and Violante cause he didn't like Godzilla. This is certainly like, yeah. What movies are out right now? Terminator and back to the future. I mean, like we were all, all that. that person, right? Like the first time we <laughs> saw the T 1000, we're like, well, I'm going to make a movie with a better T 1000. Like yeah. I want the T 1000 <laughs> in my film. So yeah, M 11, let's do it. Fair enough. Like, you know, this was, this is kind of the story, the Godzilla story I'm playing out in 1991, having seen these movies. Like, I, yeah, how do I fit a, a time traveling robot that runs really fast into my, my action figure uh, extravaganza? And I, I so. feel like 
um, this film is where the franchise is really shifting into a new era. To me, the previous two films are kind of looking for a new vibe, land, landing on it and then abandoning it. And so like, <laughs> this feels like the true beginning of the Heisei era for me. Okay. I, I think because it's a, it's kind of a conflicting a conflicting uh, good guy bad guy uh, duality of Godzilla. We're not just fully like having him stomp right. through uh, you know a, a city and oh he's the bad guy and we have the the X two you know fighter jet you know come after him or something like that. You know there's there's something more to uh, you know he's helping us. He, he's still stomping on things and there's that, you know, kind of push and pull of, is he, is he for good? Is he for evil? Um, you know, there's still quite a bit of evil in this one, but, but there's, you know, something is still about saving, not necessarily humanity, but the earth, you know? And, uh, I, 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 I dig that. And, and Mickey's back, as we mentioned, she does return mm-hmm. and she really is just in this movie as like a callback to the last one, <laughs> just to kind of continue and be like, yes, this is a sequel to yeah, she like pets and do a rat and, and that's it. she's like, oh, they're cute. And yeah. she doesn't really do anything. Does she even like, I, I think she does something psychic related, but I do remember thinking for this one and Mothra, like, is she, is she just here? Like, is she going to actually participate or is it really just like we want to have her in these movies to have a continuing through line yeah i don't don't Um, think they really knew what to do with her uh for for a while and uh yeah it is you know it could have been any other character it didn't have to be miki for that character so i agree right okay well um i guess on a scale from one to five how many major spielbergs would you give (laughs) uh godzilla versus king Ghidorah? brad three and a half Aaron, this is a solid four star major Spielberg. Wow. I, uh, I will do two and a half. Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> all right. And now we're on a roll. Cause like, this is like, they were not stopping because we got Godzilla versus Mothra the next year, 1992. Um, and again, this is kind of just like a, a, a essentially a remake of Godzilla versus Mothra. There's some new stuff in it. There's like the Indiana Jones stuff at the beginning mm-hmm. that is, is the very evil prickly. Mothra. Yeah, yeah, there's evil Mothra. Um, but for the Mothra, most, as I like to think of them. Well, yes, battle, yes. Battle Mothra. Isn't that what the name derives from? Batra. I think you're probably right, oh, Aaron, right. the expert on uh, <laughs> you. You know these things. I'm going to just say yes. You I were know correct. some of these things. I don't know We've my got, kids' names. We've got, we've got the cosmos back. So we, it, it pretty much is like a remake of Godzilla versus Mothra, which um, again is why I am not the biggest fan of it. But What's Aaron, wrong? What, what, Aaron, what do you, uh, listen, Aaron, uh, I, I, Aaron. Think we, I think we need to discuss this. What is your uh, issue? You're, you're so okay with Godzilla coming back, but as soon as one of his other friends comes back, you're like, oh, why? Why do they have to be here? Why can't I just have yeah. something well, I, new? Why, I'm why really starting to question cool? if Sean likes Godzilla movies. <laughs> I want these things. I just wish it was more like, I'm like, wait, I, I, I was excited the first time. If you're going to repeat, like basically you have it be like, it's, you know, the first time we're seeing Mothra, it's like, I would like it to be a little bit more, but at least, but at least we're I don't know, but at least we're repeating King Ghidra and, and, and Mothra. We're not repeating like Rodan, the dum dum and, and sure. You know, but others. I also am like, well, <laughs> will I ever watch Godzilla versus Mothra 1992 over 1964 Mothra versus Godzilla? No, no, no you will not. Yeah. So that's kind of like, I'm like, why do I need to watch this? Why, you know, the Heisei era, which I think in this rewatch of it, I'd forgotten, I guess, this period of movies within this era that it's like, oh, these are just like zany remakes, like updating, I guess, the effects and like bringing people back to the theater to see the things they recognize. But for me, like it was like Bialante is where I wanted this to go. And so there's a part of me that's like coming to terms on this podcast with like, that's not what the Heisei era is. The Heisei era is kind of just like semi soft remakes slash reboots of films we've already seen in this franchise. And King Ghidorah at least has like all of that insanity going on with it. Whereas Mothra just doesn't 
really like it has yeah. the indiana jones stuff at the beginning but then that sort of disappears and then the rest of it is just kind of bland it's like the indiana jones character is like a good for nothing yeah and dad. like the indiana jones stuff doesn't feel as like uh relevant or no the t-1000 had just happened you yes know, before king Ghidorah and indiana jones were you know i guess last crusade was happening at this time yeah, yeah. 89 yeah yeah a little bit i don't know but it doesn't but feel no, i see i get what fresh. you're saying it I get what you're saying, though. It does feel a little bit like, oh, OK, because we, you know, by this point, we'd had three Indiana Jones movies. Maybe where... it was a Romancing the Stone reference. Oh, man, I wish. <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> obviously, yes, absolutely. So I, I get it. This is kind of like if you've got time travel and you've got crazy robots and all that stuff, then having like, oh, this guy is just like in a tomb and the stairs are falling out from beneath him and there's a a bridge a, a rickety old bridge it's sort of like eh, are we doing like exciting indiana jones stuff or is this really just like we got another budget cut and we have to come up with stuff that can work on a budget um so i like it's it's always fun to see these enemies and these villains or not really mothra's not the villain godzilla's the villain yeah. but like the the, yeah. the monsters updated to be uh uh modern well, I'll, day I'll, quote unquote but i'll tell you what i kind of liked about this one uh, and different from uh the original mothra first off mothra is obviously a fan favorite she she's she's beautiful she's uh you know she's you know just just want to just want to look at her and just all and you know she's cute and she's cuddly should so we, she's got this, should we she's, go brad do we need to leave we need, we've anywhere? already had our moment okay <laughs> you know we're we're, we're, on, we're on speaking terms they got the cigarettes um, out <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, she's got the the Mother Earth element, and she's there to um, uh, protect humanity. And then you have this Batra character, which I found interesting because even though you know it's the battle Mothra, it's not the it's not necessarily the darker alter ego Mothra. It kind of is like the it's the 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 Hugo of of uh, you know Bart Simpson sort of uh, <laughs> thing. You, know, you just kind of left him up in the in the you know the. Um in the crawl space to, to kind of rot for a little bit, but he's the protector <laughs> of the earth. And so you have the protector of humanity, protector of earth. The protector of earth does not care about humanity, does not care about the people, but that's what Mothra is there for. The kind of the maternal instincts versus the paternal instincts. The paternal just wants to be like, Hey, I got to protect my house. And the maternal wants to protect the people. And I, I like that dichotomy of it because, you know, again, Godzilla's just coming in there and he's kind of the dick and, you know, he's just kind of <laughs> doing what he does. And, yes. uh, but I, I liked that sort of next level. Cause I thought it was just going to be, um, a simple, uh, I thought it was going to start to be like a, a team up sort of level of Godzilla and, and Mothra versus this bad, uh, moth against this bad Mothra, because, you know, we've kind of grown accustomed to, you know, Godzilla eventually turning into the good guy and teaming up and taking out the bad looking guy. But I liked that this one had a, you know, a couple more layers to it and, and giving us that. And then, you know, it turns into the two of them kind of sticking together, teaming up and then, you know, dropping Godzilla like the turdy is. The, yeah. That's turdy. what I don't like about it. <laughs> you, you, so you, 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 do you just want Godzilla to be, the do you like him as the good guy versus yeah, of the bad guy? Yeah, of course I do. He's okay. the Earth protector. He's got no, no. I no. Listen, I agree with you. I, I'm just asking. I of course, I'm. I'm not Sean. I'm not Sean. <laughs> uh, like, but I, like to me, this movie is like a cover band. You know, like you can't see the Beatles because they're dead, but you can go watch a cover <laughs> band and recapture a little bit of what you loved about the Beatles. Yeah, I don't think that's how that works. Isn't that what I've been saying this whole time that you've been taking me to task? No, for? I, I like, these are basically every, the like entire the time you were talking, Sean. I was like, "Damn, <laughs> I feel a lot like Sean right now." Mm-mm. Finally, yes. Mm-mm. Um, I well, uh, one cool thing about it, Akira Takarada came back, uh, who was in the original Godzilla and a few of the other ones, so he's in this. I recognized him and was very excited about that. Um. But yeah, that's that's actually a really good way to describe it, Brad. I'm so glad we're in agreement on that. I know that McCartney and Ringo are still around, but the Beatles are <laughs> dead, guys. It's so true. don't send it's, the email to me. It's, <laughs> it's true. So I yeah, this one more than King Ghidorah it just feels kind of like, ah, we've already I've got this movie. I can watch that one instead. Um and 
the, you know, it's sweet. The dad and his daughter are being. I actually think the yeah. people stuff in this is pretty good. Uh, I don't know. The husband wife thing is. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's fun watchable. at the beginning. It's fun at the beginning when they have this kind of like confrontational relationship. And then when he gets a haircut and yeah, but he's just kind suit. of a weird deadbeat. You're yeah. Like, oh. He just sort of shows up and is yeah, like, but I like hey, he, he calls no, her fat like three it. times in the movie. You're like, oh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's a, a behavior to model. Okay. <laughs> he goes on a journey. It is an emotional journey. And, and Brad appreciates that the character grows. This just then, loses... Brad, Brad hates the yeah. Beatles and fat James. <laughs> <laughs> on the latest Godzilla <laughs> episode. No. Uh, yeah, he, he goes through, Beatles, you know, I'm just saying it was a downgrade. He he lost the headband. He gives up his, his grave digging ways. Um, to me, that's not an upgrade. That's a downgrade. And I feel like uh, this movie is doing a disservice by its praising. That's strong. A disservice. Mm. <laughs> So see, that's do you see, do, Brad, do you see what you've brought on? Do you see what you've you've you've? Uh, I'm I'm so uncomfortable his... in this conversation. I really should be. I feel like you know, mom and dad are fighting, anymore. and I'm trying to figure out where I fall. In this, this is battle. So will I, I go that... with dad or will I go with mom. After so the what divorce? you're saying is this movie okay, how really about, does. You just, how about you just you know you just accept that you're going to have two Christmases this year? Okay, just chill out. That does sound great. <laughs> it does sound great. Well, the, I, it sounds like you're saying this movie actually touches on something very deeply personal to you and that the the story of the father and the mother reconciling their differences for their daughter is uh, really speaking to you and really what you want I'm to happen. I'm just saying I enjoyed every... watching their narrative. Okay. <laughs> that's all right. That sounds good. So uh, that's that's all I got to say about this one. That's that's about it. Uh, how many um, Indiana Jones <laughs> Dime, dime store Indiana Jones is would you give this on a scale from one to five, Brad? Uh, three, three. Aaron, how about you? It's three star Indiana James. Yeah, look at that. I, I, I two, two and a half, two and I, a half. I think yeah, you need to perfect adjust sense. how you rate things. <laughs> <laughs> Only a half star below I you. I think we all just gave it three. I think so. <laughs> Moving on to uh, the the not at all confusingly titled Godzilla vs. Oh Mechagodzilla oh 2, <laughs> which is neither the second Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla film or a sequel to either of those films. Um, it is just Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. Um, strange movie, but uh, does benefit from the fact that now Mechagodzilla is controlled by a, a, a team of... Uh, are they called G-Force in this one? Is this where the G-Force uh, starts to show up? According yes, they to are. Wikipedia, is it, is it yes. Okay. yes. Yes. So G-Force, I think they finally name drop G-Force. Yeah, because the also- G-Crusher then gets installed in Mechagodzilla. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yes. So this is, again, uh, 92 Godzilla versus Mothra, and then this is 93. So they are just really, really bashing these out one after the other. So... um. I'm not going to lie. I'm trying to remember what happened in this. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, these. A lot of these start to run together after a little bit. Was was Rodan in this one? Yes, yes. Which okay. is why Aaron's going to hate it. Mm-hmm. But Rodan is <laughs> great. He knows it. <laughs> and we also, oh, we also get um, Baby Godzilla Returns. Manila, yeah. but not Manila. Um, it's, they they said, to hey, it. let's not make this one look like a garbage pail kid. Let's actually make this one look <laughs> somewhat like, interesting. A little bit like Godzilla, just a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Um, so there Which, is I, like, that. It, 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 it's weird because, I mean, it feels like they never really like, fully pull the trigger on saying it's a baby Godzilla or it's it's Godzilla. Because like, they're like, oh, it it, uh, it was a parasitic, parasitic egg that, you know, melded with... Uh, were they trying to say that it was it was Godzilla and Rodan's baby? Like, uh, dude, uh, I could not for the life of me figure it, it's it out. It's really strange. <laughs> here's here's where I finally came down on it. Is I was like, I feel like we're watching like a marital spat. Like Rodan and Godzilla have history, and right. uh, you know, then you know, Rodan's like, fine, I'm gonna take care of the kid. You're being a bad dad right now. You know, they go off, they fight, they do all their their stuff. And then uh, by the end of it, uh, you know, Rodan like sees how good of a father Godzilla is finally being. And she's like, I'm going to give you all my love. And uh, now he's he's a a dad. I I, I, I don't quite understand it. (laughs) 
I mean, you explained it pretty succinctly. Uh, That's did I? that I you helped me understand because okay. I barely remember what happened in this movie. I do remember uh, Miki gets something to do. She yeah. is in yeah. she's piloting Mecha Godzilla, so that was fun to see. It was like great. Finally, they got a use for her. She also communicates um, with whatever the baby is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We so should ask her what's going on. Yeah. yeah. So there's that. So that this has that going for it. Like she gave it like it's good. There's some like Voltron action with that uh, yeah, gunship yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. connecting with Mecha Godzilla, and also for Kazuma, uh, the uh, who just happened to be a, a Teradon enthusiast, he shows up in this movie. You're like, hey, buddy, <laughs> you're never gonna believe this, but guess what we got in this movie? It's a, it's a freaking Teradon, right. a Teradon enthusiast. You're never gonna believe I you're love... gonna lose your mind on this one. This is he really lucked out. Like he this did. is definitely the best week day whatever could you imagine if he was a pterodactyl enthusiast and just oh man <laughs> he's like so close there, there's also so close. like they they also like there's like a whole G force I guess training program and I was thinking the whole time I was like that would be kind of fun like a Godzilla course like that you have to to learn about Godzilla and what he does in order for you to pilot this badass mecha Godzilla mm-hmm. like how do I sign up for that like mm-hmm. where can I uh I would put my name in the hat for for that for sure. So these are all uh, these are all wonderful things that I this think film it's because I think it's table. because you hate Godzilla and you want to murder him. Well, like, I Sean, like I when the Mecha so Godzilla much. is on screen, you're like you're watching, right? You're paying attention. You're like, this is cool. Notes. Yes, yes, yeah. I do that. I because I do. I think again, Mecha Godzilla. What this movie does, unlike Mothra, this the Mothra remake requel is like this is like oh there's a new element to mecha godzilla it's that the people are piloting him so not saying that suddenly makes this great by any means but i do enjoy that aspect of it and i do like that miki gets something to do mm-hmm. in this movie so uh, qu- question for you guys is uh you know in the in the true high say sense is godzilla the villain in this movie I don't think so. Listen, the 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 scientists come to his island. They steal baby yeah. Godzilla. They take it back. The only reason Godzilla comes on land is to go find his baby. Like they, yeah. like, and like the ending thing. of the film with Godzilla and the baby going off, it feels like mm-hmm. it's off into the sunset. I feel yes. like you know the, the, these are heroic figures. Godzilla yeah. did nothing. That's wrong. fair. So this is where, and the Heisei era kind of has this vibe. I think maybe this is the start of it because you do get it in Space Godzilla and mm-hmm. you certainly get it in Destroya where it's like, oh, maybe Godzilla isn't so bad. So at this point in the Heisei era, what I will say to its benefit is that it is kind of nice that we're getting more of a continuity from film to film. Mm-hmm. Not that that doesn't exist in the Showa era, but here it's a little bit more explicit because we have this returning character, Miki, even though they have like returning actors from previous films playing different characters. So it can get a little confusing. I do like that. We're in a way we are seeing a growth of the Godzilla character that I do think comes to fruition yeah. by the, at uh, the end of the, Heisei I just, era. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm looking back at these movies and apart from return of Godzilla, I, I don't know if Godzilla is actually the villain. I think we're trying to paint him as a villain. And if, if a giant, you know, uh, if a giant plant uh, with the soul of a dead girl trapped inside started yeah. speaking to me, <laughs> I feel like I would attack it too. Yeah, uh, if, yeah. A, if, a yeah. Fair, fair. if a three-headed devil dragon from the future started attacking me, I think I'd attack back. If you know, if I saw Mothra in grub form, I would immediately try to squash it because it is still <laughs> disgusting and gross. I, and like I, I think like you can't really say that Godzilla is heroic in the Mothra one. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying, but he, I mean, listen, I, maybe again, that was when he got see, humbled. He got humbled see, in that did one. Did you see Mothra in grub form again? I can't keep looking at that thing and just being okay with it. it, it, it she's disgusting. She needs to. That's bigoted to, behavior. And we're not I'm about it. That. I'm fine with that. <laughs> well, it's, it, I think maybe, you know, Godzilla was humbled by his battle against Mothra and Batra. Okay. And then in Mecha Godzilla 2, we see a little bit like he's ready to, he's matured a bit. He's ready to be a father. Sometimes being um, a father does that to you. I agree. Yeah. So I, you know, that, 
I think we we are seeing there the right now up to this point the franchise the only character that's had any growth is Godzilla but I'm okay with that that's kind of that's what we're here for so uh what is there anything else about this movie <laughs> I I think <laughs> this film is a oh, little this, dull it, it is dull and it also introduces the concept of Godzilla having a second brain in his tummy I think Yeah I'm fine oh, with that yeah. that makes that, sense <laughs> well, come on and that's, it's not really his tummy. Great. I mean, they're they're literally saying he's got a he's got a brain in his ass. Like that's I, that's just weird. There you go. But you're right, Brad. Continue along this. Uh, uh, it's a little dull, but the highs are really high for mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of good like kaiju smackdown. Yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. And yeah. so like for when, sure. when that's happening, I'm like invested. I'm here for it. I'm enjoying it. I'm having a good time. Fair enough. Fair enough. Anything else you want to add, Aaron? Um. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what are uh, the the ratings? Um, do we just we do we want to do ro- pterodons, pteranodons, <laughs> pteranodon enthusiasts? <laughs> yes. How many uh, pteranodon enthusiasts do you give this, Aaron? Um, I with with the number of kids that I I, I will associate it with the number of kids that I have. Uh, two and a half kids. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's all I really claim. There's, I there's don't know one, if you've there's consulted one, there's with one. the church, Aaron, but that half <laughs> is a full being. I just, Brad, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure about that one. He's 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 made some mistakes. So, <laughs> Brad, how about you? I I have consulted with the church. I am right with the Lord. It's three stars. <laughs> it's it's a two and a half for me. I don't know where I stand with the church at this point. Um, <laughs> All right, Space Godzilla. Godzilla versus Space Godzilla sounds way cooler than the movie actually is, but Space Godzilla is a badass. That's what? my review. I, I would love to know what the Godzilla fanatics are doing on the other end of this podcast, just screaming like they're creating voodoo dolls of Sean Eastridge, and they're just jabbing it with blades, not needles, not nails, oh, blades. My God. my God, thank you for making that happen everyone listening um brad tell me a little bit about your feelings about space godzilla. space godzilla looks so cool sean he does look great i just said that <laughs> looks so cool uh we get more baby godzilla in this movie you yes. know I, like i'm starting to really come around to like loving the f- idea of a baby godzilla um <laughs> I mean, Space Godzilla, <laughs> like I have an action figure, Space Godzilla, it looks really good on the shelf. Oh, I had one too. It was fantastic. I, that's, I think, what was most disappointing is having an like action figure. The for so Star long. Falcon in this, right? That's yes, super yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I had, the, I had the Space Godzilla figure, and I feel like that move this movie does not live up to the, what that figure looked like on my shelf but makes for aaron, a great mondo poster yes yeah, aaron aaron are you so you're agreeing how do you how do you feel about space godzilla i'm not necessarily agreeing i mean brad said that this uh that space godzilla which is the lamest name in the godzilla universe um <laughs> that he looked cool i would like to rebuttal that that he could have looked a lot cooler um because i mean they they talk about that the reason like uh, the reason that he looks like this or that he came down or whatever is because he had he got g cells and there's only <laughs> there were, there were two instances that the g cells i guess went into space it was uh Biolanti and it was uh, uh, uh i guess g cells that got onto mothra when mothra went into space i don't right. that the whole thing listen if you were as cool looking as Biolanti and you you got your G cells into space and mixed it up with Godzilla and then mixed it up with uh, space crystals and whatnot, you would look so much cooler than Godzilla with like a, a really cool backpack and some, you know, some big old shoulder pads. Like, come on. You I'm okay with better. space Godzilla. I think he's he looks fine, cool. but he looks like, he looks like they just had a leftover Godzilla yes. costume from the last <laughs> I mean, that one. Is true. And they said, <laughs> and, and they're like, Oh, let's, uh, yeah. Shoulder pads and a backpack. Let's put it on. You know, I, yeah. I, just, I think, I think it's a bit lazy. I think if, if you got some violent DNA in you, you go full, like crazy and make them like a really weird, you know, Goop monster yeah. from space. I, I mean, Look. he looks a little bit like Elizabeth Shue in Adventures in Babysitting. Like, she <laughs> got the broad, broad shoulders, right? 
Uh, what a Paul. What and, a Paul. And, and, and it <laughs> is like an easy attachment. You know, Elizabeth Shue, very tiny uh, hourglass shape. But then she puts on that uh, coat yeah. and then it's, yeah. you know, like a linebacker, right? Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. an attachment. It's But like it's a, like it's an effective attachment. Mm-hmm. This is this is the downside of like again 92 93 94 we are getting one right after the other and they had to throw something together real quickly and uh, I think they thought Mecha Godzilla 2 was going to be the last Godzilla movie as well but then it did so well that they decided that's not going to happen we're going to keep making them so I think maybe just the the rush and all that look i like space godzilla is that all right i yeah. feel like i'm on a you're on gonna like one of these movies <laughs> <laughs> i didn't say i liked the movie i like space godzilla i don't know about the movie itself but uh i uh i do like the design a lot i don't have any issues with i mean it, if you know, look at the early concept art for space godzilla it's way cooler you know <laughs> like wasn't it well it was supposed to be like an ice monster yeah like yeah it, it, it looks very bernie wrightson um I'm I'm a big fan of these designs, and I'm sure it would have looked absolutely killer if they could afford it. But again, I think Space Godzilla just looks rad. I, I just I just like I like that backpack. <laughs> I'm reading on Wikipedia that it says, well, didn't he? No, I guess he didn't. But Akira Ifa Ifa Kube, I will say that name right someday. Um, he said it, it said he refused to be involved in uh, Godzilla versus Space Godzilla after reading the script which reminded him too much of a teen idol film and included rap music. (laughs) Did I I miss something? Uh, Yeah. Did did it have rap music? (laughs) I don't think it did. I don't remember any of this in this movie. Like, did I miss something? I I don't. Uh, Yeah. That doesn't quite compute. Yeah. So uh, let's just put that out there. Um, I saw that and had to say it, and I don't remember. Also, what else was, I was there going brief to say. nudity? I'm looking at the Wikipedia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was the, there was the dude showering. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, right. On the that's island, right. like you yeah, can see yeah. a big, big old, big old yep. butt in view. Yep. Yeah, big I don't butt. think of butts as butts. nude. Yeah, it's just a booty. Yeah, All it's right, just a booty. Let it. Let your freak fly. Let your booty fly. fly. Let the yeah, booty fly. Let your let your let your freak. Can we talk about what what's what was the mech Moguera or something? What was it? Yes, I yeah. cannot pronounce it. That's why I have not brought it up. <laughs> Magera, Mo- Mo- Magera, yeah, something Magera. like that. Uh, the it's a reference a to. Wide. It's a reference to uh, the Mysterians, which was Ishiro Honda. Uh, Ishiro yeah, Honda it was movie. an old Honda like thing, and it looked even dumber back then. Um, and they <laughs> so, didn't. They didn't really update it all too well, so I, it it didn't work for me. And was this? Was it this or was it Mecha Godzilla 2? Some of these just run together. I literally just watched this a couple days ago and I mm-hmm. have trouble remembering which one this is which. Is your podcast, but is this the man. one with the <laughs> is this the one with the angry pilot who's like, I have to kill Godzilla, but then in the end he's like, Oh, Godzilla's not so bad. He's a he's a pretty cool guy. Um, um Is that yes. this one or the last one? No, this this is this one. Uh, okay. Yeah, where the, the 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 guy's like, I need to shoot this guy in the armpit. Like, yeah, he killed Godzilla, movie. killed my my friend or my yeah. brother or somebody related to me. And yeah, I which we, we've kind of gone revenge. through with a couple other movies before, where it's like, oh, Godzilla, yes. you know, killed my killed my brother. You prepare to prepare to die, sort of thing. Yes, but uh, then Godzilla but then you learn to love Godzilla him. You're minus like, one. Yes, you yeah. So <laughs> by the end, you're kind of like, okay. But then he learns to love God. How he learned to stop worrying and love Godzilla is what the subtitle for this film uh, should have been. The big bonus I will say about this movie is, you know, we we got we got baby Godzilla in the last one. Baby Godzilla in this one gets a cuteness overload. Like it, mm-hmm. you know, full full Pokemon, big old yeah, eyes. Yes, the big like, old eyes. Yeah, just just cuteness overload. Looks nothing like Godzilla. You're like, how are you going to get to that next level? Like, <laughs> like how are you going to? Where are that? the Where are the baby Godzilla action figures? Is well, I'm what sure I'm saying. In Brad's house, I'm sure. Yeah, probably. Yeah, we have to raid Brad's have any, house. Uh, little Godzilla action figures. Nope, nope. Mm. Mine are all mm. big adult, adult. space, <laughs> space adult. Godzilla grown up. <laughs> no kids in Brad's house. Super. I badass. am child free. <laughs> it's true, <laughs> and we're keeping it that way. Correct. So, so we've got references to Ishiro Honda movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, Akira Ifakube is not coming back because uh, uh, rap music. Right. Uh, I forgot. Like the thing is, like it also just feels like quite long. Like it just kind of it just kind of keeps on going and doing things that aren't really necessary. There's like a like a twenty minute 
Yakuza subplot where Miki gets like kidnapped. Uh, oh, that's right. And for no reason other than for her to all of a sudden have telekinetic powers. Yes, and she lifts the bed. She lifts she? the bed. Like she, yeah. she, she lifts the bed so the hero can shoot. That's right. The, like the guy falls in love with her, and he says, "Like the world without love is is not a world." What is the quote? It's like a I very don't know. I wish like, oh, shot in the foot oh li- life would be sad without love. And they love each other, and then he's he is gone by the next, gone by the next oh. one. Good, good, yes. good job, Miki. You pick him, pick him, pick him. Right. <laughs> you know how to pick him. Yeah. But uh, I also love. Uh, they do try to tie it all back together with the, you know, we have to get the message in there. These are message movies about like humans are destroying the world. But this one is if we keep putting things into outer space, if we put if we use outer space to dump our trash, it's going to come back as Space Godzilla and kill us. That's the lesson of the movie. They say yeah. if we keep polluting the universe, more monsters will come attack us. Um so yeah, at least they tried to bring in the environmental messaging. I'll give it that. Yeah. Anything else, Brad? You're suspiciously quiet. I mean, you know, let's just get, let's just go. Come on. All right. <laughs> how many how many space crystals would you give Space Godzilla? Two. 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 All right. Two across the. There we go. Now there we're we now we're cooking. We are cooking with gas. Cooking so with geodes. We. Uh, I. I have to say the Heisei era at this point. I remembered enjoying it a lot more than I did. I I don't enjoy the Heisei era as much as I recall. There's still one more film, Sean. I know. Mm. I'm building to it. Okay. There we go. Build. I knew it was coming. Okay. The suspense. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I what was at this uh, up, up to this point. A lot of the complaints I've made, like, oh, why couldn't we have had more stuff like Bialante? Why are these just kind of soft retreads of movies we've seen before feeling a little disappointed, a little bummed, but like I knew we were going to end on a high note. Cause I remembered having a lot of affection for Godzilla versus destroya, which is really, you know, it's the, it's painted as like the final Godzilla movie. It's the final Heisei movie, but it could also be the final Godzilla movie ever. Um, and it's also amazing. I love Godzilla versus Destroya there so much. Um, but see, we're ending There's on a high a note. Not only does the Heisei era end on a high note, this episode will end on a high note. Uh, Brad, talk to us about Godzilla versus Destroya. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's so, so good. You know, you, we begin with Godzilla. You know, he's he's having a little bit of a health crisis. Uh, his heart is <laughs> melting all? down. Yes. He's breaking out in rashes. He looks <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Uh, and by then, ter- but by terrible, you mean he looks amazing. Yeah, he looks so good. What he a looks great so good. It's pretty, looks so pretty good. killer. He looks bad. Uh, and then we get <laughs> all these mutated crabs <laughs> that <laughs> that are the result of the oxygen destroyer from the original Godzilla film. What and, a callback. And yeah. they form into Destroya, which is such a gnarly looking kaiju. This like is literally what talking li- about. the the actual Satan of yeah, Godzilla. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he's here to tear Godzilla a new one. I love so much that this mo- like so Return of Godzilla was basically like let's ignore all the Showa era and pretend this is a direct sequel. But like Destroya does it so much better. It mm-hmm. does it so much better with the callbacks. You've got uh what's her name from the original film coming back reprising her role you've got uh the oxygen destroyer bringing that back in actual kaiju form to be like the ultimate baddie for godzilla uh i love that stuff this feels like a natural conclusion to 1954 godzilla to the point where i kind of pretend this is not only the end of heisei but like the end of the character like this could be the finale really i I can yeah function as the finale as well but sorry aaron you, you talk a little bit about destroy uh, i mean you guys said it all it, it's it's just it's a great uh like cyclical storytelling that that i i agree with you it, it does better than what uh return of godzilla was trying to do i think maybe it's a little bit easier when you're trying to put you know kind of like you know an 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 end point, a period, an exclamation point at the end of this, instead of, you know, trying to pick up where you left off, but there's still something completely satisfying about, uh, this type of movie. That's, uh, both kind of reverential and, and, and emotional, but also like, like you said, destroy is just a, a, a kick-ass kaiju. And it, it, it's just another great freak of the week 
uh, that you get to watch, you, you know, in a, in a great, you know, end battle. Um, but there's there's stakes in this movie that I think yes. that that a lot of the other Godzilla movies don't really have, uh, especially the ones leading up through the through the high era. Like, uh, I mean, Sean will disagree with me, but you know, uh, you know, the Futurians cannot get away with what they're getting away with. So we have to stop them. Um, but there's other things with, with, you know, Mothra and, and uh, space Godzilla where you don't really feel like it's, you know, like there's a lot, you're just kind of watching them flail around. It's and like, like par hoping... for the course for the most part. It's just yeah, like, exactly, oh, exactly. Godzilla's oh, got to fight the monster. Thrash, thrash, thrash. But like knowing that Godzilla is now a in nuclear meltdown mode. And if he gets destroyed, you know, it could be the, the end of the world. Um, and it's just, it's really fantastic and a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't say enough about this one. This is, this is, this is elite level, uh, Godzilla right here. This one feels very forward looking like it, it, it doesn't feel like it's trying to replicate anything from the franchise. This feels like it's Godzilla of the now, the now being the mid (laughs) nineties. Yes, (laughs) it is. And it's also, there's this, uh, I, you're absolutely right. It's the stakes involved. There is also a sense of like, we know where this is going. It's mm-hmm. not just like, it's another episode of Godzilla. Let's do the, you know, the, it's the stuff we've seen before. This is a, no, you've never seen this before. You've never seen us kill Godzilla for real. Like, you know, in the first movie they kill Godzilla, but obviously he keeps coming back over and over but this is the one where they're like this is going to be the the final one and they give it the emotional weight it needs like the movie is very for all the ridiculousness of you know some of the the uh very aliens inspired stuff on the ground with the the mini destroyers it's very somber like there is this emotional uh there is an emotional through line that kind of grips you. Like I was surprised after being so dismissive of the previous entries, how emotional I felt watching it and how attached I felt to this iteration of Godzilla, but also like the characters like uh, Miki, who is the only one that is uh, recurring from the previous films, but you do really feel connected to her. Mm -hmm. You do really feel it when she says at the end, like, my my time with Godzilla is done or like my journey is done. Like it feels like that and it carries emotional weight and significance and it doesn't feel empty. It feels earned in a way that is uh, very, very satisfying and very um, moving. Like it was very. Well, Sean, was... Sean, Sean, if I could real quick, uh, just read my, my, uh, my professional letterbox review for you. Please. Real quick. Have uh, I liked that one yet? <laughs> uh, like I'm it. checking. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, you have. Excellent. Uh, so, so would you like to read it? Or is this one of your, like... No, I don't. He's got it, he's got it bookmarked. Them. No, I, I know this. I know this. Um, anyways, he, he, uh, Roar of Sadness is one of the most heartbreaking scores ever written. Please play this at my funeral. Uh, <laughs> that, that's, all, that's all there is to it. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some... It's just... it's It's so much fun... And um, the, like like you said, destroy is just a really fantastic uh, villain, and to s- start him out as those little like mini aliens, uh, and then and then evolving into that the 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 big giant you know queen alien looking looking one, um, and but the emotional like you know kind of roller coaster of of baby Godzilla coming in, uh, and again reverting back to now looking like Godzilla instead of like a a, a Pokemon. Um, was 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 another trip but uh, yeah yeah well there's also you know there is the level of um the humans feel involved in a way that is more satisfying mm-hmm. and miki like there's a there's a really dark like tragic element to the kind of culmination of her relationship with uh, godzilla jr where she manipulates him into his death because it's necessary to save Japan and the world and like kind of juniors acceptance of that. Like it's, it's all very like dark and it's very, it's a very sad movie. Like you're right. It is fun. And it's, 
exciting in a way not many of uh, the Heisei era films have been like genuinely thrilling but it's like there's a darkness to it like when when junior gets like brutally just dis- not destroyed but like killed like you feel that and when godzilla is like mourning his dead son it's like this is for like for them being like oh Bialante, we went too far destroy a really amps things up a lot yeah. it does not feel like they were remotely concerned about like are kids gonna want to come see this like how's the democrat like they are just kind of like you know what let's just put everything we've got into this and and really crank this up to uh to the maximum and yeah it works I, for me on on many many levels. It works for me. I also like the idea of um, again them kind of going coming back around to the original, and um, you know with the atomic bomb, it was something. It was death that created this life, and then with um, you know within within the movie, it was the oxygen destroyer, and it was this uh, this death that you know killed you know Godzilla or or whatever. Um, but then it also created this life that they found again. So it's kind of like these, these, um, ideas of man never able to fully, uh, you know, create or manipulate life. Like it wants to, it, it, it cannot control it. Uh, in the words of, of another wise scientist, life, uh, finds a way and, uh, <laughs> You know, there, there's something really kind of cool with that. Also, I think, I, I think I, it was uh, Major Spielberg who Major said that. Major Spielberg, yeah, that is the guy that said that. Um, I also want to bring up one thing because uh, there was a line in the movie that um, I'm not sure I picked up on the, the first time where they said uh, the first Godzilla was killed 40 years ago when they're talking about the, the uh, oxygen destroyer. You know, was this the first time that they had referenced that there was a different Godzilla? It was, it was the reporter girl talking to... Um, I think maybe the scientist, I can't remember who mm-hmm. she was talking to, but she said first Godzilla was killed 40 years ago. Uh, is that, do we think that's part of the canon that this is a separate Godzilla or? I think that's what they're implying. Like, cause yeah. the, it, they, they show like, it's like this thing destroyed him and then, Oh, it's another one. And again, you know, when you start to look at the, <laughs> the, uh, the narrative arc and looking at King Ghidorah and saying, wait, which Godzilla is this that they're, destroy like is there yeah, another true. Godzilla if they kill this one back in time does that what's you have to just kind of go with it but I think what they are implying in this is that this is a different Godzilla it's spawned by the same process but uh the 1954 Godzilla was its own thing yeah do you so. think Oppenheimer uh <laughs> when he was talking to Einstein this is what he imagined a hundred percent of yeah. events. Yeah. I yeah. think so. This is what he yeah. was imagining. This was what we were, what it was all leading to in the end. Yeah. Um, so yeah. When I Brad, was originally you... thinking about the ending of this movie, I was going to like refer to it as bittersweet, but it's not really bittersweet. I mean, it's really just kind of bitter. Yes. They had, there's mm-hmm. like a little teaser, like where it's like, Oh, Godzilla, like, but it's not like Godzilla survived. It's more of a, the spirit of Godzilla it's, lives on. And of course, yeah, like we get but, more but, Godzilla but, movies, but, but to what sure, effect? But, yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. 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 But, but there, there is, you know, I, I did see it as almost kind of like a bit of hope because the whole thing is like, you know, they, they talk about, Oh, the temperature's going down and then they zoom in on again, that amazing uh, fog work that the, that the effects guys are, are just killing it with. Um, and you zoom in and you see that silhouette and he's just like, uh, you know, it's kind of like that silent roar that's in the background and you get the feeling that, uh, oh, it's it's baby Godzilla that has sacrificed himself. He is now taking the burden of, you know, being this walking nuclear reactor uh, in order to save humanity, you know? Yes. And, that's, and then that's, it's also like it is a realization of this character. Godzilla is a character that has now, through the course of these films, gone on an emotional journey to go from being just this pure destructive force to like the savior of Japan. And I think that's why this film feels tragic on a couple levels. First, like we have a Godzilla that is essentially fighting for its life and, and dying and, and being destroyed from the inside, but is fighting to defend Japan, whether it knows it or not. But also like none of this is his fault. Like he is our creation. It's our, like it's we, the the tragedy comes from like, Oh, humanity spawned this creature that is now being destroyed because of something it can't control 
in the slightest. So on many levels, it's like Godzilla's finally become the hero just in time for him to, to be destroyed. And it just, it's, it really is like, I think I'd forgotten how much of a, it really is a gut punch. Like it is, you know, for, for films that like, yeah, the effects are a little dated and some of it is a little hokey and yes, we're ripping off James Cameron here. And certainly like there are things to, to poke at, but for the most part, I think this is a really effective film overall. And certainly one of the mandatory watches for this, this franchise as a whole. Agreed. Brad, any final thoughts? No, you said it all. I think it's a fantastic film. Probably the best of the Heisei era. Actually, yes, it is the best of it. I'm just going to say it. Um, I won't say until you've asked me what my rating is. Well, <laughs> let's go ahead and do our ratings. Um, What are we? What is this? Like, I feel like this this one, this one needs something. How many how many co- crying Godzilla's do we give it? Oh, how about crying Aaron's? Goodness. Yeah, crying. Yeah, I was like, you and me both, big guy. How many, Aaron, how many crying Aaron slash Godzillas do you give this one? Uh, I'm giving it four solid teardrops. Brad, how about you? Uh, four as well. I will give it four across the board, ending on a high note. And go. then I guess, do we want to rank that? We can rank the Heisei. I feel like that's an easy Yeah, Heisei is easy. Heisei is okay. easy. Let's do, uh, let's do this. Let's say Heisei and then let's say, uh, what, top five, including Showa? At just oh. Showa and Heisei. Okay, okay. Can we do okay. that? Just to keep, let's keep it, it we'll easy it. because uh, there's so many movies in here. It's not something where we could just be like, yeah, let's rank the Indi- the five Indiana Jones movies. Let it's me like pull five. the list up. Hold <laughs> on. <Here> we, <laughs> we still got to pull the list. Well, I'll let me just kick it off because I th- I think I can do this. No, I'm going to Letterboxd as well. Well, I already revealed that Destroya is my my favorite of the bunch which is 100 percent the case so. and i think we can all say that right this is the only one where we all gave it four stars yes uh, or four teardrops sorry uh, hold on, four hold, teardrops. On. Uh, hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on no, nobody uh, rated I, anything I gave four. i gave i gave four stars to king ghidra yes i did that's well, right did you but we I all completely we did. all agreed okay. on uh uh the one before this too didn't we Yes, we, gave we Space did. Godzilla two yeah. stars. Yeah, but we didn't give yeah. it four. We give it. We didn't give it two. four. This is four stars. <laughs> so okay. So here's here is my my Heisei ranking. It goes Destroya, Bialante, and then <laughs> I'm looking at a full ranking. Then King Ghidorah, then uh, Mothra, then Mecha Godzilla two, <laughs> then return of godzilla okay and then space godzilla okay i I thought we were going to have a very similar list brad Uh, loves that backpack brad what's yours i like that backpack i'm going uh godzilla versus destroya biolante uh king Ghidorah, mothra uh no no king Ghidorah. yeah king Ghidorah, at mothra mecha godzilla 2 space godzilla then return of godzilla it could be that maybe i'll change it just so ours are identical because i i i don't particularly like return of godzilla i can't say i i really do like i'm not gonna fight for that to be like yeah it's high i don't hate either return of godzilla or godzilla versus space godzilla they're just not the movies i'm gonna watch anytime soon again no i wouldn't and not high on any recommended like must watch Godzilla movies. Aaron, what's your Heisei ranking? Listen, I want to put destroy it first. I want to join you guys in harmony. Uh, there's something just so goofy fun and everything about King Ghidra that I have to put him first. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm going that I'm going destroy it. I'm going Violante, And then I'm going literally just throw the rest uh, into, a, into blender, a blender. And I don't care. <laughs> yeah. It, I don't want to throw them in the trash, but, but they don't mean really anything like i have fun with portions of them but i you know i i could i could go with with i, I could create my own super cut of these movies and i think i could make a, a a great godzilla film okay awesome can we do we want to do top five top 10 godzilla movies so far what do you think i'm gonna do just the of showa and heisei my my ranking my top five ranking just those ones i'm excluding okay. anything we have not yet watched Okay. I would say <laughs> it it goes Godzilla. The original Godzilla is number one. Uh, then Destroya, then Bialante, then uh, Ghidorah, the three headed monster, 
and then the original Mothra versus Godzilla. That's my top five so far. All right. I <laughs> am going to go, you know, OG Godzilla. Then I'm going to go Hedera. Then I'm going to go Invasion of Astro Monster. Oh. Then Mothra versus Godzilla. Then Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go OG Godzilla. I'm going to go Godzilla King Ghidorah. The 92? One? 92. One. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to go Destroya. Then Mothra Godzilla from uh, 60, what, 4? 63, 64. 64. And then uh, Godzilla Hedora. Nice. I feel like, yeah. He- yeah, Hedora, I feel like should be higher on my list. This ranking needs a revival. I mean, Megalon for the Jet Jaguar. You know, I know you guys are haters of Jet Jaguar, but I I uh, love Jet Jaguar. I don't like the movie except yes. for the final twenty minutes. The battle is the best. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Brad's just gonna go fiddle with his space Godzilla <laughs> figure. In the so, corner. like the next uh, Franchise Boys episode is just going to be the Roland Emmerich film. I mean, for two hours. Yes. I think, yeah, two hours of us discussing Roland Emmerich. I think we should do. There are a couple options. We could we could include it. We could bundle it in with the Millennium Era, or we could do just Millennium and then do uh, the American. I think Godzilla I think that's the way to go. Is Millennium and then and then it's Godzilla ninety eight plus Legendary. And then we treat Godzilla ninety eight like Three Mile Island and just include that into the context of Godzilla Millennium. Exactly. Yeah. That is the plan. That is the plan. And yes, it will. I I swear, swear to the to the heavens above, to Mothra and all other beasts that this is this is going to happen within the year. Okay, because August is almost done, man. I, you're right. We're, we got to do it. So it's going to happen. But this is uh, this has been great as always. Thank you guys for being here. And uh, Aaron, tell the good people at home where they can find you on uh, on the internet. Uh, you can find me at a cool hand fluke. Uh, not really doing much on the socials. I write lots of uh, letterbox reviews, and Brad pretends to like them. Um, uh, but you can find me on. <laughs> I don't pretend uh, to like them. I oh, hit the them. like button. Yes. Listen, I, I'm talking metaphorically, spiritually. Um, uh, but never emotionally. Um, oh, that's I feel, I, I feel, I feel, I feel those empty likes is what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, you can find me at a cool hand fluke uh, somewhere. I'll, I'll, I'll talk back. And Brad, how about you? There's like 16 more Godzilla films. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, are we counting the animated ones? Cause no, I got to watch those. Are... I haven't watched them yet. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, you can find me on most social medias at mouth dork. You can of course, uh, follow, uh, everything comic book related uh, with my other podcast, comic book couples counseling that I do with my lovely wife, Lisa. We just got back from San Diego comic-con. We conducted 11 interviews and we're turning those 11 interviews into a half dozen episodes. Our latest episode is a conversation with Rom V about the new New God series from DC Comics. But we've also recently talked to Tom King and Daniel Perry about Wonder Woman, uh, Junie Ba about the new Ninja Turtles series, Night Watcher. A lot of cool stuff over there, if you like comics. And by the way, if we were going to include Godzilla comics into a franchise, franchise boys conversation, Godzilla versus Charles Barkley is at the top. Heck yeah. <laughs> Yes, that goes without saying. Uh, and you can find me at Yeshondorman on Twitter and Shondorman05 on Letterboxd. Thank you, Franchise Boys. Always a pleasure. This will continue. Don't you worry. And uh, we will see all of you at the movies. 